<laughs> so there's a picture of number one. Find that area. Okay, so I'm going to add up um, all the little areas, right? I'm going to add up all those rectangles from negative 2 to 2 of the top one minus the bottom one. So the height of that thing is is top minus bottom. Um, I mean, you could even do height times width. But the height is the top one minus the bottom one. And the width of that is dx. So it's like infinitely small rectangles. We're adding up all the, all the little rectangles in there. And then we can do it calculator to do that. Math 9, negative 2 to 2, 4 minus x squared, dx. So 10.667. I don't think this is specifically tested on the test, but this if you notice the symmetry, you could go from 0 to 2 and multiply it by 2. And then get the same thing. Again, that's not necessary, but especially if you were doing it by hand, it might be more convenient to throw a 0 in there to make it a little easier. Um, Keep rolling with the review, or? Yeah, let's keep rolling. OK. Number two. Let R be the region in the first quadrant enclosed by x equals 3, y equals 1, e to the x over 3. OK. So x equals 3, y equals 1. But if we're doing e to the x over 3, let's see. E to the 0 is 1. E to the 3, well, 3 over 3 would be 1. So maybe even a table of values would be a little bit clearer. If I plug in 0, I get 1. If I plug in 3, I get E, which is 2.7. And then, so Y equals 3 or excuse me, x equals 3, y equals 1. And in general, I know what the shape of y equals x over 3 looks like. Uh, oh, and I've got a calculator, so if I really want to see more of it, I could. So something like that. For that base area. Now, be careful, because there's a way to find the area of that. But that's not what we're looking for. We don't want the area of that thing. We want equilateral triangle cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis. So like coming up out of the page are equilateral triangles. It's kind of hard to visualize that coming up out of the page, equilateral triangles. So I want to add up sum, that's the summation sign, all the triangles from 0 to 3 dx. Sorry, super important text. Do I want someone to make copies for me? Yes, yes I do. Um, so let's see, the area of a triangle, or the area of an equilateral triangle, was root 3 over 4 s squared. And s would be the length of one side of the triangle. So that height would just be top minus bottom. The top piece minus the bottom piece. 
So the top is that curve, e to the x over 3, and the bottom is 1. So integral 0 to 3, root 3 over 4, s squared dx. And from there, it's a calculator problem. And then that area for the triangle, it's always square root 3 over 4, s squared? Um, for, an, for an equilateral triangle. Okay. <coughs> yes, and there was a, we did a warm-up where we derived that, but then we decided, uh, let's just memorize that rather than figuring that out every time. So the, the main areas you need to know for tomorrow are equilateral triangle, area of a half circle is pi r squared over 2. That was today's warm up. And the area of a square, s squared. Like Hopefully the equilateral triangle is the only new one on that list. Alright, again, on the test, some are evaluate and some are, especially some of the multiple choice ones, you can just match up and see what looks correct. And on multiple choice ones, there's some that, I mean, you can rule out some because there's some of the answer choices might even have the wrong dx, dy in them. So it's like, well, this is clearly a dx problem, so I know it's not one of those two. Then I just figure out, so at least... I mean, you guys are generally, at this point in your life, pretty good about ruling stuff out and, and handling multiple choice tests. So remember those strategies still apply to AP Calculus. Is it calculated for the whole test? It is calculated for the whole test. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Hassan? Can we do number 19 from Lopital's Number 19 from Lopital's worksheet. Yes. So flip it over. Number 19, so if I plug in 0, remember I'm not doing the equal stuff because that's, uh, you know, not quite right. So if I plug in 0, I get 1 minus 1 over e to the 0 is 1, so I get 0 over 1. Okay, well that's not a... Yeah, that's not a L'Hopital's problem at all. That should just be zero. So that's like one of the sneaky ones of, hey, don't use L'Hopital's if it's not required. So you have to show that, well, wait a minute, this is actually now the arrows. I don't need the arrows. The equal signs would have worked just fine because it's not indeterminate. There's an answer. I don't think I put one of those on the test because there's only so much time and I want to test L'Hopital's. So. But that's a good one because you get, you get in the, the, the habit or the pattern of using L'Hopital's and it's not even needed on that one. Right, so you gotta, you got to show me something. I mean, uh, you don't have to spell it right. If you want to say indeterminate, I don't. I don't know that you could make it any shorter than indet lh. I think that would be that would be acceptable. Don't go any shorter than that. This comes up a lot on my the Facebook group of calculus teachers. Like, how little can can my student write and the grader still understand what's going on? And usually it's it's pretty little. Like you're because the people grading it. Our calculus teachers, so they know what you mean when you say this. One of you on this one? Okay. So 14 on L'Hopital's worksheet. So 
So number 14, limit as x approaches 0 from the right of negative x natural log of x. If we plug in 0 now, we get um, 0 times infinity, which isn't, I mean, I don't know what it is, but it's not officially one of the indeterminate forms. So if we, if we get creative in how we write x, because 1 over 1 over x is the same thing as x. Now the top goes to infinity and the bottom goes to infinity. And so now we have an indeterminate form. So we will write indeterminate and let's use L'Hopital's rule. So derivative of the top would be negative 1 over x. Derivative of the bottom Whoops, I'm going to rewrite that as x to the negative 1, so I don't mess up its derivative. It would be negative x to the negative 2. Okay, well now I've got an algebra mess on my hands here. Um, so negative 1 over x. Let's see, that's negative 1 over x squared. So times negative x squared over 1, if you want to do the keep it, change it, flip it thing. So the negative is multiplied to be positive. One of the x's cancel out, and we get x. So the limit as x approaches 0 of x. Now we can substitute again and get 0. Fifteen was kind of similar. You had to kind of cheat your way around it. Other questions? I'm going to veto any further L'Hopital's. There's only two. They're pretty straightforward. There's a bonus one. It's pretty straightforward as well. You have to use L'Hopital's uh, more than once and know some derivatives is the only. So like reviewing how to use L'Hopital would not help on the bonus. It's more like, do you know your derivative rules? Do you want to go back to the review and do three and four? Or do you got other questions? I mean, the main topics are area, Volume by cross section, volume by revolution, and L'Hopital. The four things. Can we do a volume by revolution one? Sure. Is there one under review or no? Yeah, number three and four are both volume by revolution. <laughs> number three. Use the region enclosed by the graph of y equals x cubed y equals 0 and x equals 2. One cubed is 1, two cubed is 8. There's x equals 2 and y equals 0. So there's my uh, initial area. And remember, there's, a, there's one section on the test that has that one area find the area and then we do a couple things off of that like we did in warm-ups today. This one's just rotate that around the x-axis. So that would be way down here. So that's a disk. So we're going to add up the circles. So the area by cross section and area by disk and washers, they're, they're not separate ideas. They're just how you form them. But you end up adding up areas the same way. So 0 to 2, I'm going to add up all the circles. So pi times r squared dx. All my circles are perpendicular to the x-axis, so they're, they're sort of x circles. Correct. If the disk were like this, 
if, they, if they're hitting the y-axis, or if they would hit the y-axis if they were big enough, then you would be adding up dy. Okay. Um, number four, yeah, number four is not dy either. So we need to <laughs> maybe do a dy problem. Back to this one, r. Um, again, we can, I should have taught it this way from the get-go, instead of just kind of figuring out r. You can always do the top thing minus the bottom thing for r. So draw it. Most people don't have trouble drawing it. Uh, the top thing would be x cubed, and the bottom line would just be 0. So r is x cubed. And maybe I should have done it that way from the get-go. Instead of saying some of them have minus signs, well, they all have minus signs. The top thing minus the bottom thing. It's nice when the bottom thing is 0, because then you don't really have to worry about the minus sign. R is x cubed squared dx. And this one doesn't say set up, but don't evaluate. So we'll evaluate it. Don't forget the pi. 0, 2. I'm going to do a little bit of math on my own. I can know that uh, power to a power I multiply. And so there's my answer. If you needed to do it, I mean, if you needed to, to write it like it looks, that's OK. It should be, it should be the same thing if my algebra is right. 57.446 for that volume. Want to do number four while we're rolling along here? Sure. Okay, so it's the same base area. So I can go a little quicker because I know what it looks like this time. Y equals x cubed, x equals 2, y equals 0. But this time I'm going to rotate around y equals 8. So definitely a disk problem, because there's a big giant hole in the middle of this thing. OK, measure r. Always measure r from the axis the curve, so there's little r, and there's big r. r just goes to this curve, big r goes all the way. Again, maybe we should always set it up as top minus bottom. So for big r, the top is 8, the bottom is 0. So big R is 8. And that, that makes sense. Big R is this is 8 all the way through. Remember, you can look to see if it's changing. That kind of helps you know if there needs to be an X in there or not. So big R is not changing. The outside radius, you kind of just look at the outside of it. That The outside of this thing looks like a cylinder. The inside radius is changing. So the top one is 8. The bottom curve is that that curve right there, which is x cubed. So pi integral from 0 to 2, 8 squared minus little r squared. That would be a little bit more of a pain to put in the calculator. Yeah, I mean, no, that's not a safe stop, but on the multiple choice section, a lot of the answers look like that. So you'll know whether you need to keep going is there or not. A free response like this, so, I have to actually solve it? so there's a the free response. If You may have to solve it, but there's some in the free response that use the wording we used in warm ups today that say, 
um, set up, but do not evaluate an integral, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Yeah. In fact, it says in number three and four, use this area. Because you're right. Otherwise, it's like, well, what region am I rotating? So if I go to put it in the calculator, I think that's all correct. 143. Point six one six. And again, just read the directions carefully, or obviously look at your answer choices to know if you know the inter the integral is enough, or if we want you to evaluate it. And even if you only left it at this, when I wanted this, that's like two points because most of the work is right here. Right? This is just can you punch buttons on your calculator? You just did a whole homework. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah. Four of the five are due. You're now one fourth of the way done. <laughs> Hopefully more than that. Yeah, a little more. <laughs> Lopatol should go quick, so that should be another one. And we did some of the others, so. Is there something you think we should go over, like a commonly missed washer one? We just did a washer one. <laughs> no, we did a washer one. Washer means it has a hole in it, so that number four was a washer. So one in terms of y. So let's take that same integral, just on the just because it's easy, or that same base area. So I'm just making one up now. Uh, let's see. So if I want if I want y circles to show up, I need to rotate it this way. Um, let's see. How weird do we want it to be? Let's rotate it around y around x equals three. So this is like a made up review number five here. So same uh, same area from three and four. But we're going to rotate it around x equals 3. So we draw our axis of rotation. We mirror it across. So 2 would go to 4. And we end up at 6. So something like that. Um, all right, disk or washer? Washer. 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 D-Y or D-X? D-Y. D-Y, because you asked for it. Yeah. But you can see that the circles, um, and this is why you have to be careful. They don't cross the y-axis, but they're perpendicular to the y-axis. The circles are stacked up in the y direction. So I'm going to add in the y direction, so a D-Y problem. What are my limits of integration for this one? Zero to eight, because I got to I got to use y values, so I'm going to go zero to eight. We're almost out of time, so r squared minus r squared. Big R would be to the outside edge. Um, top minus bottom doesn't work, but we can do right minus left. So that would be 3 minus... Okay, be careful. That's x cubed, but I have to have it in terms of y. So x is the cube root of y. So there's big R. Little r... Again, right minus left, or just look at it for this one. So what's little r? One. You can say it's three minus two, which is one. So it doesn't change. Yeah, that's right. It's it's a 
consistent uh, cylinder drilled out of the middle there. So pi, 0 to 8, 3 minus cube root of y squared, minus 1 squared dy. And that, you know, if, if it's a multiple choice, that might be the answer and you're done. Okay, feel a little better than you did 20 minutes ago? Yeah, that's good. Okay, good.